And what's going on? It's your boy Joe Fontaine, the VIP Sound Lab. I'm not going to run so long on this. I'm just going to answer uh, two particular questions that I got from uh, two particular VIP members. Uh, I had one VIP member who's doing a transition from the MPC over to Machine. His question was, can he import his Akai library over to Machine? And the answer to that is yes and no. It's kind of 50-50. And I'll, I'll explain that to you in a minute why I'm saying it like that. And I had a question from another VIP member there wondering, wondering what happened to the Pro Tools uh, controller editor template that I promised. And I had sent that out, man, um, the other day, actually. I was real busy, but I, I went ahead and I, I did that. And I'll go over this um, this controller editor template with you. Because, you know, with Machine, it gives you the Ableton Live one uh, automatically. If you didn't know that, that comes with the 1.8 update as well as the, uh, the original 1.6 and i'm not sure how far back it goes but i know it comes with the ableton live because i didn't get i didn't get machine until it was to the 1.6 with the uh the plugin support okay so just for tutorial purposes and to give you a visual aspect to understand this a lot better and uh it's gonna erase uh what i'm doing here i had i erased everything here and saved it anyway i had an opportunity actually to uh make a track for curious if you're familiar with hip-hop um, Curious is a famous uh, hip hop rapper from the 90s, and I got an opportunity to make a track for him, and he spit some some, some fire on that. And once that's complete, I'll hit you guys with with, with the track. You can check it out. And uh, I want to give another shout out to uh, MC Nikki D, uh, the first female rapper of Def Jam. I got a call from her the other day, and got an opportunity to actually chop it up with her. Real cool, laid down person, and uh, got an opportunity to uh, throw some tracks her way too as well. All right, but anyway, um. Over here, as you can see right here under my miscellaneous sounds folder, I have an Akai library right here. This is just basically the factory set that comes with the MPC 1000. And I'm gonna use this for an example, just to show you how you can get your sounds from the MPC inside a machine. So let's just say for the sake of argument, I'll just, um, you can see right here, it will not read anything in that file that is all program sequence file. It's there, but it's not reading it. It's just reading the program files and wave files machine currently does not read mp3s or anything like that and a lot of times with mpc it's hard to get certain mp3s to play in there as well you know anything above 16 bit it's kind of up for grabs it, it might show up sometimes it might, i know i've had mp3s play in my mpc a couple times uh but a lot of times a lot of them don't show up all right so let's just go ahead and let's just grab one real fast because i want to run too long this video mpc import dialog menu comes up you have Import all banks, single banks. Here's your pads. This is pad one, all the way down to pad 16. You have an option to go through your banks. As you can see right here, you can see this would be bank B and machine. And uh, you can see right there just has a sub base there. Bank three would be empty, and bank four has a, uh, I guess, a little base right there. So you can do import single bank if you just want to import one particular set of sounds because you might not want all the banks you might just want one particular bank the rest were just some sounds that you had on there for whatever reason but uh that's how that works you can import single import all i'll just press import all and we'll give machine a second just to bring those up all right so i brought those joints up Brought all four banks in as you can see right here went through bank a the bank D with machine, you got eight banks. So machine doubles uh, the NPC right there. Now, if you're coming from the NPC, just so you understand a lot better, machine has what's called scenes. Okay, man. So the scenes kind of play like this. We have a looper icon right here. This right here is, is your little scene uh, area here. Your scenes, uh, you arrange them, I guess you can say in, in, in a vertical manner like this here like but it plays in a horizontal fashion like this so on the npc you know how the um the sequ like this would be sequence one so let's let's just say we'll label this let's say put my cat box on so i can see that better we'll label, label this sequence one okay and then over here let's say we'll label this one sequence two label this one sequence three just for the just so you get an idea it'll, it'll jive in your head all right so right there that that would be like 16 sequences you create on that one set of sounds okay and then it has an icon right here a machine where you can go right here to your pattern bank 
you can press two. Now it goes from 17 to 32 because it goes all up to 64 patterns per group. Okay, see so that's 64. So you have the, the ability to put 64 patterns is what they call the machine. You know, to help you understand a lot better from the NPC, that's basically where you're doing your sequencing right here. And you have what's called scenes. So it, 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 it don't let it confuse you. Cause I mean like these are sequences, it's not gonna play like, okay, this is sequence one. And then when this sequence is done, like, like let's say if you have this like four bars, eight bars, when that bar ends, it's just gonna loop back down here. It's not gonna jump to your second sequence like that. See how that changed? So in machine, you have to use this little looper icon here. Okay, then on this scene two, or you might wanna call this one sequence two, that would be more or less your, your real sequences. Let me, re, let me rename this one too. This is like sequence one. Okay. So whatever's up here, just make it match basically what's down there, depending on what you got going on. So now when machine plays, if I hit this little button here, see how that plays? That would be sequence one. Now it's running over here in sequence two. Then it's gonna loop back to scene one. Okay, or whatever you have right here in, in, in scene three, your third sequence. So that's pretty much how that works. You know, I hope that doesn't make it too confusing because it's pretty straightforward. You know, if you got eight bars here for intro, you might wanna make sequence one, eight bar intro. You might wanna have sequence two, 16 bars, eight bars. You know, you might wanna have it four. You know, whatever you wanna do to get, you know, a lot more out of your tracks. You do it like that. It'll come. It'll come extremely natural. Cause I, when I first came to Machine for my NPC, like I like I didn't understand it either at first. I was like, what, I was like, what's going on? But it, trust me, once you get it down, you'll see Machine. It, it, it's a beast, and it. I don't want to say kills the NPC, but man, <laughs> man, let me tell you, man. Once once you get on Machine and the hardware controller plus it looks just like the npc anyway and, it's, and it does what the npc does more than you got the vintage modes and ah oh man trust me so machine is a monster you know and then you come over here in other groups and then you're going to come to find out how it got the keyboard mode you can control your midi controller with it and uh you know play your sounds in there and you get everything tracked out a lot easier you know it it, it, it just makes your workflow a lot quicker like boom you run through it like so fast all right so you know with the npc it's a midi production center the npc you can't sequence sounds from the um the npc controlling like phantoms and, and motifs and things like that machine has a um a midi import out in the back of it too but currently right now it only has one out and one in it doesn't have as many uh as the npc no hardware outputs things like that currently you know i don't know if native instruments plans on adding some hardware uh, behind machine. It may be an uh, audio interface built into it, but I don't know, I guess we'll, we'll have to see. So that's pretty much how that works. Getting your sounds um, from your Akai library into machine, and then you start banging on your pads and start getting busy. And of course you have your color group assignments. If you wanna get everything neat, neat and orderly and assigning your kicks, you know, for example, in a certain color and you know, the other sounds and other colors. All right, second question. Uh, the controller editor template, okay. For Pro Tools, this is the host transport control for Pro Tools. I sent this out yesterday. It is inside your email inbox. You can go ahead and download that. I also got a MailChimp flyer. And uh, right here where it says fast forward, rewind, play, and all that, and all that good stuff, all that's mapped out. Um, it's pretty much no different than, you know, any other controller editor template. You know, the mappings are assigned in there, as you can see right there. With Pro Tools, it kind of works on, um, like, I believe the, these are on channel 16. Yeah, okay, channel 16. All these are on channel 16. That's how you find your uh, your mappings for that. Everything else pretty much works the same. You know, I, I put two pages in there. You know, again, here, here's your, your zone range. You know, we're going from C1 to D here. And then on page B, it's going up. And that that's basically, if you don't understand control editor templates, that's all that's doing. That is going up so you can find your notes. So if you're in Pro Tools, if you're, you know, jumping on exp, uh, Expand To, uh, Boom, uh, things of that nature, this controller editor template will allow you to hit those notes on Boom or uh, Expand 
things of that nature. You know, there are some people who might not have a MIDI controller right off the jump. So a machine's a great way to do that. Then you put it on keyboard mode and there you go. All right, so here's your controller editor template for Pro Tools. Again, I sent it out. I don't want to run too long in the video. Oh, and uh, it depends on your controller too. If you're on the, um, let's say, assignment page here, the Mark 1 doesn't have the ability to change the color pads here. So if you have the Mark 2, what you want to do, go over here, man, to where it says uh, Machine Controller 2. Click on that, okay? And then you'll see right here, this is where some, some of the sounds are actually, you know, I just, I just labeled them like that. Because like when you're on a pad here, you just go right here. Like if you want to label this, you know, VIP, I don't know. Let's say if this was some type of percussion sound, you just type in like that. And what you type in here, it just basically shows up down, down here. If you want to be neat and orderly like that or share your controller editor templates with friends. And down here is where you're just basically going to do your color assignments uh, for your template. Like if you want to have this pad, you know, orange, you, know, you might want to have this pad like green or mint or whatever. You know, you also have the dual modes here. You know, if you want to have multiple color assignments, okay, you have that option. So that's pretty much how that works. If you want to do single or dual. So then that way, once you do this, you look on your controller on your machine controller when you look at the mk2 as is basically what it is right here these pads will light up according to what you uh what you put here so the color assignment feature uh you can take that with you you know just make sure um that when you press shift here don't forget you have to press shift and uh control uh up here to get it into the midi mode so then that way it can control because if you have it uh, in, in the regular hardware mode, it's not going to control it. It's just going to, it'll sit there or it'll play if you have machine open or, or whatever the case may be. It's not going to be a MIDI controller if you don't have, if you don't hit shift here and control here to get it into its MIDI mode. Um, I also did micro two, you know, for people who have the, the new uh, MK2 micro, you know, same thing. I didn't leave you guys out. Here's a little uh, uh, control editor template right here too. These these pads right here, um, I didn't get an opportunity to actually do these yet. But by the time um, <clears throat> I do my next mailer, I'll map those out. Because I, f I felt it would be a little redundant being that if you put it on MK2 mode and I have the mappings right here, like you see... Uh, Right, right here it's it's on channel 16 so 15 16 17 18 14 for rewind and record I believe is already defaulted but if it's not it's 118 so it's pretty easy it's only those six little mappings is all you got to know and you know you just go to your machine controller mk2 you go right here you just go like this you put this on channel 16 and then you go over hit your number and then, and then you just type it in all right and that's that's pretty much how that works um I'm trying to think about am, am i leaving anything out in here um i think you just have to make sure that that's on host transport control and yeah you should be you should be good to go uh, from that point so that's pretty much it. I'm going to hold it up right here. This is your boy Joe Fontaine, the VIP Sound Lab. And I will pretty much see you guys on the next one. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into to some more good stuff. I got April. April coming up. I got I got a, a lot of goodies coming up in April. Uh, we just sent out the new free VIP uh, April edition kit. We sent that kit out. Uh, it has some nice drum sounds in there that you guys can use for free. Uh, we just sent out some free VSTs. We sent out the free NPC Legacy uh, app. We sent out the uh, what is it? The the, the, uh, the electric pianos, the Mr. Ray, and all of that. Uh, we sent those out. Uh, man, I can't remember a lot. We we sent out a lot of free goodies. You know, for March Madness, man. We man, we've been sending out a lot of free stuff. And next month, of April, we're gonna be even further expanding out. And we're going to be updating our, our download process <clears throat> to make downloads a lot easier for you guys. 
it's just gonna be a simple one click and that's it but again right here here here's the host tramp the host transport control icon if that's not on see how i i took that off if that's not on see how that's not working your host transport is not going to work so make sure you got that highlighted like that and you are ready to rock so that's pretty much it and i will see you guys on the next one peace